recap, this is what the report stated, exercise, the smoking, the uh, excess uh, drinking to control our weight, to eat healthy, and to um, maintain those numbers. What I'm going to share with you now is not related to that report. It's from my research and my understanding of dealing with so many families and being submerged in this world of dementia care that I'm gonna share with you items that I also feel are very important to maintain a healthy brain. We need our sleep. And I know you're busy. I know we're all busy. We've got 100 things to get done in the day. Studies are showing if we're not sleeping at night, the microglia can't go in there and clean out the plaque, all the garbage. It only happens when we are asleep. And the plaque is part of what's causing Alzheimer's disease. And Margaret Thatcher, just as an example, died with Alzheimer's disease. And people said that she was lucky if she got four hours sleep every night. So I'm just letting you know that sleep is a major factor. So let's, let's look at improving our sleep levels. Staying social. The alternative would be what? If you're not socializing, you're isolating. And what happens to people who isolate themselves? Depression. And studies are showing depression, untreated, could actually turn into, over the years, permanent Alzheimer's. So we don't want people to isolate. Please, we are social creatures by, by habit, so keep that going. Do what we can to maintain our social um, circle. Stress. And I'm really looking forward to reading uh, Dr. Brown's book because I noticed she had some information around the stress and the impact, especially on women, because we are taking a lot more on these days, these years of, of, of this new generation. And so stress is a big concern. The studies are showing that stress actually can shrink our hippocampus, that area where memory and learning takes place. Which is really interesting, though, is when we exercise, we can try to build more neurons but then we get stressed. But then let's exercise so we can keep things healthy in that hippocampus. But if we're not exercising and we're stressed and we're stressed and we're stressed, what do you think will happen to that hippocampus? It will shrink. And we are putting ourselves at risk for Alzheimer's. So to understand that we have to work on ways to lo lower our stress and whatever works for you, whether it's doing breathing, meditation, going for walks, uh, walking the dog, playing with children, having a bubble bath, whatever you need to do, or just in the moment, take those deep breaths to talk to your body, to say, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm not stressed. You know, when you're in traffic, to kind of tell your body, I'm okay, to stop releasing all those stress hormones that aren't necessary, because when cortisol get, does get released, it has the ability to pass through our blood-brain barrier, and cortisol is which shrinks our hippocampus. So we want to do things that is going to, to limit our stress. And I think laughter <laughs> is, laughter is a medicine. And I, I love the look on his, nope, haven't seen the cat, nope. So making sure that if you've had a stressful day, maybe pull out your iPad and go flipping through some of those fun cat videos, dog videos, that might lift your spirits. Maybe some old I Love Lucy reruns. Whatever you need to do, laughter is a very good medicine. Being around friends that can make you laugh is double whammy. I want to talk a little bit more, a little serious about protecting your head because we've got a really special universe happening in our head and we need to protect that. We do have a skull, but if we aren't wearing helmets, if we aren't wearing seatbelts, if we are wearing the flip-flop slippers and we're going up the stairs and there's toys and there's stuff around and we're... we're, we're causing ourselves to have these accidents, we are putting our brain at risk. There are types, a type of dementia called CTE, and I'm sure you've heard about it through the uh, Football Association and hockey, and it's chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And so people with serious concussions, lots of concussions can develop this. And so please, reminder, stay safe. When you're on a ladder, have somebody supporting you, those types of things, make the right decisions to protect your brain. There's lots of correlation between hearing loss and dementia. I'm sorry to say that, but it's happening. So if you're noticing, you are asking, what, what, what? And you're thinking they're just mumbling, perhaps it's time to schedule a hearing test. Maybe it's just wax, but maybe there's something more serious. 
We're not sure what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? But in the case of hearing loss, we're not sure if it's the hearing loss that causes dementia or dementia is causing damage in the brain to the hearer. But the studies were showing that people who did have hearing loss of 25 decibels or more were actually more uh, prone to developing dementia. All I'm saying is let's, let's examine this. Let's fight back as much as we can. People are afraid to wear the hearing aids. They think, oh, I'm too young for this or whatever it might be. But your brain health is important. Let's fight back if we can. And more studies will, will, will be watching to see what really is the reason. Because if you're not hearing, some people will think, oh, well, I'm just going to stay home. I'm not going to go and hang out with everybody because it's too annoying. What, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? So then they go home. They're isolating. They become depressed. And are they ending up with dementia that way? So keep in mind that this is a problem. The last thing I want to talk about is exercising our brain. We're going to exercise the body for sure, but we also need to continue to exercise the brain. And they're saying five minutes a day is enough to build that cognitive reserve we need. Now there's people who've said to me, Karen, I exercise my brain every day. I do the crossword puzzles in the paper every day. And I think that's great. It's really good. We want to do that. But if that's all they're doing, I just want you to know that's a person telling me, I exercise my left bicep curl every day. So what I'm going to show you is just a reminder that there's more inside our brain that we need to be exercising. We want to exercise the hippocampus, the place where memory is. And there's things we can do. And this quick example is the memory card game. Have you ever seen where you put pairs down, upside down, and you try to find the match? And if you didn't find the proper ones, you have to remember where that 10 and where the jack was when you open up another one. You can do that alone, or it's better in pairs. So think about uh, doing this with even grandchildren or you know, um, husbands, spouses, friends. Uh, but doing this while the coffee is being brewed in the morning, just by yourself, will be helpful, just as, as an idea. But we want to exercise the brain uh, for the memory. Yes, word skills. Yes, the crossword puzzles. Reading, reading out loud is even better than just reading silently. Using the word search, uh, playing Scrabble, those are all helpful. Focus, women, we could be, you know, the type of people who are doing five things at once. Would you agree? We're, we're talking on the phone, we're stirring supper, we're feeding the cat, and we're, you know, sometimes we lose the focus on what we're doing, and we're not doing things as ideally as we could be. So knowing that we have to get that brain focused, and have you seen those games out there where you have all these words listed as their colors, but it's written in a different color, and you're supposed to focus and not, your brain automatically wants to read what that word says, but if it's the word green and it's written in red, we have to quickly go red. It's really challenging our brain to stay focused. So those are just some ideas on how to stay focused. Coordination. Have you ever done the rub the belly and pat the head at the same time? Um, I've learned to juggle now, and it took me 15 minutes, and it's that eye-hand coordination that I really worked hard at. And so something to challenge yourself with, to learn how to do something that you're really not that strong at. Uh, yoga. Yoga has great poses to keep your coordination strong. Critical thinking skills is the last sort of region of the brain we want to exercise, and that is really trying to problem solve. How many of you have ever played the game Clue? Professor Plum murdered who? Yeah, so, so really trying to focus. It was the, where was it? Was it the dining room or was it the, was it the library? And really narrowing down these logic type puzzles are absolutely fantastic for the brain. The sad thing is I've seen people, oh, they're so happy they retire age 65, they're done. And then they go home, and then a few years later I find out they've developed dementia. And I think it's because they're not exercising their brain. They're not exercising their body as much. They're staying home. And, and this is usually men. It's usually the men that I've noticed that just seem to be taking it more easy. This is not good for brain health. So it's just reminding all of us to try to stay motivated of ways we can maintain that healthy brain that we deserve. Please know that you're important people and continue to inspire others. And I'll continue with my purpose. Uh, please continue with yours. And um, I, you know, I wish you all the best.